Hey. Hey, there we go. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, you're cutting out a little bit. I don't know if you can hear me. Yep, no, I can I can hear you perfectly. And if I if I cut out, just let me know. Um and we'll continue, bro. The hair flow is insane right now. I know it's ridiculous. Dude, okay. First off, let me I'll just do a quick introduction. I'll well, hold on. before you start though, you're you're cutting out now. Is it bad? I don't know. It's like weirdly static. I'm not sure. Like okay. Yeah, that's consistent. Okay. I don't know what the heck is going on. Okay. Hopefully it doesn't do any more static. Um I've had a couple new subscribers to the channel. So I just want to say welcome, Jess. Welcome, Carter. And it's interesting when people subscribe because the channel is literally like, I'll just call it a video diary. It's for myself, it's for my friends like Jude. And we can, if there's no schedule, there's no upload schedule. It's just do what I want when I want, include my friends. And today, I'm just here to pick Jude's brain on a couple topics, just hear about his input, just hear about his life a little bit, just so that we can look back on this. Because I think, I think it'll be cool. Uh, it's always kind of beneficial to hear different outlooks and everything. So first off, um, I just want to say this man is multi-talented. He writes, he paints, he does music. He has huge biceps, huge quads. He's a handsome man and he kills it in like everything he does. And we're going to get into that more later. But you asked me a question earlier today on the phone. And I think the best way to lead into that is my question to you is you've lived in like a bigger city and you've lived in smaller town so out of kind of those two dynamics what are some of the pros and cons of both and then moving forward maybe like thinking about having kids and everything where would you want to raise a family what atmosphere you could also pick both but what are your thoughts on that yeah that's a very um, interesting question yeah so i spent um my childhood childhood was actually spent between um, Indonesia, um, which I vaguely remember. I was there till I was like two and a half or something. Mm -hmm. uh, Louisiana and then Walsenburg. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. from six years on, uh, Walsenburg, Colorado, that is. And from six years old on, um, I've pretty much only known small towns with the exception of the three years I spent in Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. Now for me, um, I remember growing up in Trinidad, Colorado, it always felt like there was nothing to do. Um, I was always bored. I changed friends every year and I always felt out of sync with the small town vibe. I always felt like I couldn't relate to people. And so I thought by the end of it, after a few fallings out with um, a lot of people I knew and was close to, I thought I'm done. I'm clean slate. You know, let's go to the big city. Yeah. Um, my sister, my half sister, Jennifer, um, cause I barely knew her and she lived in Austin, Texas. And she said, well, why don't you come down to visit over spring break and see what you think of it. And I went and fell in love with the place. I lived there for three years, like I said, and I was just like enthralled with the big city vibe. I mean, there were so many things to do. It was overwhelming. The traffic wasn't too bad when I first moved there and I thought I'm never going to leave this place. Like there's endless, endless possibilities. And then the same things that I'd experienced in Trinidad started to kind of seep back in. You know, I found I couldn't relate to people. I couldn't, um, I felt out of place in a weird way. Uh, more actually more so than I did in small towns like Trinidad yeah. and Worst of all, the traffic got worse and worse as I, as I lived there. I had the same job for three years working for Dun & Bradstreet. My commute went from like 20 minutes in the morning to about 45 plus on a good day. Yeah. And I was done. I could not do traffic anymore. Uh, for I, I just stayed in my apartment for the last year. I didn't want to go anywhere. Yeah. And I thought, well, what's the difference between this and the small town I used to grow up in? Mm. I used to live and everything worked out to where, you know, I, I lived to, in Springs for a little bit and then I just ended up back in Trinidad and I've been since. Yeah. And from that experience, I, I feel like I learned that um, it's really what you bring 
to your life. Yeah. Um, that is to say, like, it's up to you to make the best of the situation you're in. And really, when you're in a big city, it just kind of amplifies all the good and bad things that you're going to experience in a small town. Granted, there's some weird isolated communities in, in the United States that are going to have their quirks. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It, let me see the good things about living in a small town like Trinidad. Um, for me, one of the biggest ones, uh, um, weirdly enough, is traffic. Mm. Uh, I love being able to, um, at least at my old job, wake up four minutes before work starts, throw on some dress clothes and just show up, you know? Yeah. yeah. Literally four minutes before work starts and I'll be on time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, you know, th little things like that that I took for granted when I moved to a big city. Um, that and there's actually really something to be being able to go to a grocery store and seeing somebody, you know, when you go. Yeah, that's cool. It feels cool. like you're just always in this, an actual community, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you're not always going to see people you like, but yeah. um, it's the value of that familiarity. I'm a small town guy and cool. that's through and through. And because of that, to answer the other part of your question, as far as having kids, um, you know, somewhere in between, probably not much bigger than Trinidad, mm -hmm. certainly way smaller than Austin. Yeah. I want my kids to be able to have something to do. I want, um, I want some, a place where I can do a lot of stuff. Uh, Trinidad's growing into that. I don't know what God has in store for me, whether it's staying here and continuing with the work I'm doing and helping to build new businesses and kind of grow this community, or if he's going to show me off to Salida or uh, whatever other ski town that I like. Yeah. Um, yeah. Off the top of my head right now, I'd say Breckenridge, you know, some something small, uh, but with everything I love to do. And I also want my kids to enjoy what I do, but it's up to them. But I at least want to have a community that's big enough for them to be able to branch out and kind of explore what they're into. But mm -hmm. Um, also not too big where they feel overwhelmed and feel like they're kind of lost in the shuffle of a high school of a thousand, two thousand, three thousand 3000 people. Yeah. With, with Denver, with Castle Rock, with uh, Colorado Springs, with, with a lot of these things in the middle, we now have, uh, well, first off coronavirus and then slap on um, the racial injustice and everything that's going on. First, I'm actually curious about coronavirus with, like as we speak right now, as things have opened back up, how, cause Trinidad is, you know, so many small businesses, basically I'd assume majority, if not all, how are the businesses doing maybe the ones that don't have a website or like how are in general people accommodating what's going on right now? So that's coronavirus. That whole experience has been, been very interesting for us because um, that is my chair creaking, if you hear anything. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> very old chair. I promise. I promise. I promise. <laughs> I swear. No, but uh, the thing about Trinidad is we live in a position where we're actually kind of isolated from the same fears that a big city would have with a ton of cases of coronavirus. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the most recent stat has probably changed since is six in Los okay. Angeles County. Wow. You know, people are like, you should feel lucky. You know, this is the biggest county in Colorado. You only have six cases. Like, yeah, but we also have probably one of the smallest populations in Colorado. <laughs> in Los Angeles. So that could be a part of it. Okay. But the main thing is that there's been a very nonchalant attitude. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm serious about that. Like, I mean, you see a lot of people with masks and everything, but I mean, you walk to Walmart mm -hmm. and they don't even force the mask policy. I remember early on in this, I walked in and I'm like, are you going to kick me out? Mm -hmm. Cause I wasn't wearing a mask. I said, why would we do that? Yeah. <laughs> so I shot them. Um, restaurants okay. were not allowed to have seated customers. I was talking to um, a vegan restaurant today. I went and got some, or no, it was yesterday. I got some vegan food. Um, I try to, go to like every restaurant in town just to yeah help their, I mean it's it's like nothing it's just me but yeah uh, I try to diversify and mm -hmm. I know the owner she's a really nice lady and uh when I asked her how it had affected her business because they were allowed to stay open but in a very limited capacity so to yeah. go orders people um could only come in like one customer to customer at a time they had to line up outside yeah. uh six feet separation all that stuff 
Um, and she's like, you know, our business got cut by at least 50%, probably more. I mean, people still got to eat, but the biggest thing really to me, just looking at that is less foot traffic from outside uh, tourists. Okay. That said, I feel like it probably would have been way worse if it weren't for the fact that we've become the hotbed for legal marijuana. Okay. Everyone's got to get their, um, what's the word, their munchies. Yeah, right. um, we've probably got a pod shop for like every church in town. Yeah. Which, I mean, don't even get me started on why there's so many ch different churches. And, and the, the weird thing for me um, is that, I mean, you, you, you go in and you see like, you see people lined up like for half a block or, you know, at least 10 people deep. Anytime you drive down commercial street and it's all pot shops, you know, and it's like, you know, in the midst of all this, people are doing everything they can to get, yeah. get their weed, I guess, to relax, whatever the case. But yeah, um, it's just, it's interesting to me that uh, the way priorities kind of shift. That's what I'm saying. I did that in, in lines for food and restaurants and things, but yeah. But the other thing too, is that because we're right on the border, uh, because we're a hot spot for marijuana, most of those people who are lining up are out of towners from Texas, New Mexico. And there's continuous debate about whether, um, whether evidence shows that, you know, they're, they're coming from hot spots of Corona and Texas and other States and things like that. But, you know, uh, whatever city council or uh, governmental entity in Trinidad who views this in all unlikelihood there is. I mean, they believe that there's no, no sign of that. Um, the bottom line is it's all about the money. Yeah. Yeah. That's literally the bottom line. They get a cut. They get a cut of the marijuana. Why would you cut off that lifeline? No, yeah. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Uh, this may need to be stricken from the record because uh, I'm working directly with the government of this town on a construction project in their city hall. Yeah. And one of the things they said, like, where's the evidence that, you know, all the, all the, <laughs> or all the people who are coming to buy marijuana from hotbeds. And yeah. other the whole point of this was to restrict tourism and the outflow of people from other States to prevent the spread of Corona, mm -hmm. but we still got to get our money. Yeah. With, with these things going on, are people protesting in Trinidad? And if so, where are they protesting? Oh, you're talking about with the... Um, Police brutality and Black Lives Matter and yeah. yeah. So there was actually a protest at the roundabout. Oh, um, yeah. I, I, it's like right at the center of town. It's the only roundabout in town. And I think I'll insert it, a picture. I think they dispelled like within an hour it was kind of like i don't know it was very quick okay. okay at least from what i understand i mean i was busy all day yesterday so i didn't even drive by i heard from other people what was going yeah. on i think there was some topless girl there with her stuff oh. tape. i don't know it was crazy so i will i'll answer your question and then that you asked me earlier and then we'll move on so um there's a thing going on for anyone who doesn't know which i feel like a lot of people should know um, today is the June 2nd and a lot of people are posting black squares. And so the point from what I gather with the black squares is to stop the modern flow of just posting whatever you want and acknowledging that there's an issue going on. And so for me, um, I didn't post one because I feel like people know, uh, my feelings and how strongly I'm going to represent African-American culture. And the other thing is, is that something that's happening right now, and this is, this is a very unpopular view, like I'll say that right now, is that people are being bullied into activism. I'm not saying don't use your voice. I'm not saying don't get educated, but there are people who are doing things for the recognition rather than trying to learn and educate themselves. So what happens is, and here's what I'm saying, is that I personally, I have, I live in a great place. My parents have worked very hard for the place that I live and the place that they provided. But I've been racially profiled by police before. I've had issues because of the color of my skin. So I'm very, you know, I'm passionate about this. But what matters, I don't care if you post black squares for the rest of your life. 
it doesn't matter if you're treating people like crap in person, right? So this whole thing is saying acknowledge that there's an issue, learn that there's an issue, and when it comes for you to step up or it comes for you to stand out, do it. If it means donate behind um, closed doors where no one talks about it, do it. That's, yeah, so that, that's basically all I have to say. Do you have anything to say on that point? Are you okay moving forward? You know, actually, the only comment I'll make is I'd be very interested in hearing your experience with um, yeah racial profiling. Yeah, yeah, I've I've actually I don't know if I've ever told you that I've experienced the same thing. No, I want to um, hear it. It's on a minor scale. Uh, it happened in Trinidad, but um, it's something that I haven't dwelled on and I've moved past. Mm. Um, but my family has been affected by it, um, and not nearly to the same degree. Uh, mm as a lot of others but um and that's a story i think i can tell you in, in privacy that um is yeah i feel like it almost in a weird inadvertent way made me uncomfortable um feeling pressured to have to do it it was almost like i'm kind of doomed no matter what i do right you know? and so i haven't said anything or done anything mm. um I had a conversation with a few people today about that same thing mm. because it's really hard to differentiate between people who are well-meaning or people who are doing it um, just as a way to fit in or like everyone else is doing it. So I'm going to post something. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. What are you bringing attention to when you make that post? Is it for you mm -hmm. or is it really going to benefit somebody else? Mm. Because if it's not, then you really need to check what you're doing it for. Yeah. And that's my, that's my bottom line. That's It'll be interesting to see how things move on, but I was definitely interested just to hear about Trinidad and it'll be yeah. uh, intriguing to see what it looks like moving forward too. Absolutely. We're, on, we're on a weird island here. I mean, yeah. Trinidad lags like 10 years behind the times. Yeah, yeah. Whether, whether it's economic trends or even societal trends, yeah. we're weird. What would you say is your main medium of expression, first mm -hmm. off? Because I, I know this question may be difficult. We can kind of get into little pockets of each, but. My main medium of expression, I think I do my best work in expressing myself in my writing. Okay. That takes various forms. I mean, when we were, and back when church was in regular session before Corona, I mean, a lot of the things I would write would be about scripture, about whatever I felt the Lord was uh, leading me into talking about. Mm -hmm. And those mm -hmm. things would end up becoming, you know, notes or documents that I would just write, you know, and express um, my experience. And then what I discovered, it was like this process of discovery because I'm a very recently saved person as of 2015. Yeah. yeah. I was chronicling this journey of, of that. And every once in a while I'd get something that I thought this needs to be shared. And it always seemed like the timing was right where I would be asked to speak around those times. That's so cool. And so I would take that and use it to present a, just a, a message that I felt was timely and good yeah. novel writing, which I'm still in the process of. Um, but before I get into that, I think one thing that, you know, um, uh, that is like a highlight of my expression of um, myself through writing is that, that whole chronicling of my experience with a certain ex and um, he read it like a novel. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Legitimately. Yes. And real, real quick to interject in brief. Um, he basically just went through an experience with an ex um, and every night for must've been 10 or 11 nights. It was something around that. He would send me <laughs> just this, an email about, you know, every chapter of the journey through it. And I told him, man, like, and like, even when, like, when we hang out, like, I'll quote certain parts from it, just because like it, it, like, like, like little accents, like little things that stuck out just because I'll look forward to it every now I'll just be in bed, listen to music and like reading it. And I just think it's so funny. So I've, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll that's, I still have those all starred in my Gmail. Bro. They're so uh, but in order to capture that, in order to properly demonstrate what I feel, I can only put it into words. That's you. Um, I mean, I do art. I paint, mm -hmm. uh, make stupid videos all the time, mm -hmm. uh, most of which I don't share. Right, <laughs> yeah. Really, yeah. Um, 
but I love to draw. I love to, I mean, I was into animation for a while and throughout all those mediums, I feel like if I really pursued them, I could express myself adequately, yeah. but there's something about writing and the arrangement of words in a certain pattern yeah. and the ability to, for me to look at it and read it and kind of put my mind into the viewpoint of somebody uh, who's experiencing that and like think like what are their what's their background and when they read this are they going to get the same feeling as me yes, and so when I'm making these considerations in real time I'm making these um, decisions in real time as I write editing in real time and and then sometimes I'll just do it in raw form and I'll read it I'm like that's good enough yeah and other times I'll write it and think I gotta tweak a few things this doesn't make any sense but yeah, yeah. it's easier edit after the fact usually there's something about that medium i guess i grew up reading a lot um i remember there was uh, requirements in middle school you had to read a certain amount of um books and take a test on it to verify that you, your comprehension of what the content was and you used to have but i think the average person's goal to get like the baseline bronze level was like two books and pass the test like 50 percent i'm already no. and then yeah through a quarter which is like eight weeks yeah two months uh, um reading two books like come on for me i was like really yeah. um and then silver standard was like i'm, I'm make, pulling these numbers all the top of my yeah. head i'm just estimating it's yeah. probably less than that, to be yeah. perfectly uh, and you know the duration of the book would determine the, the number of points you'd get so the longer it was and the more points you'd get on the test and Basically, uh, you know, they had different tiers. And I remember I used to get platinum tier every, every quarter. Yeah, and that wasn't yeah. enough to encompass just how much I read. Yeah. Uh, eight books or something, like a book a week. Mm -hmm. And I remember I quadrupled it. Yeah. I had one, one quarter, I had like 30 books yeah. read. Yeah. I would, and I would test out like 100%, 90% on all of them for comprehension. Yeah, and they just ask like trivia questions from the book you supposedly just read, and I would just blow it out of the water. Yeah. And they didn't have, I like just blew the scale away. <laughs> and I'm not saying that to brag. I just mean I had like this sick obsession with reading. Mm -hmm. That's been largely replaced with this obsession of writing. I do a lot of reading and research on my phone. I've got like 50 tabs open of Wikipedia articles. Yeah, of just random stuff. I mean, Yellowstone Super Volcano. Yeah, Firefly right there. <laughs> even see it but and yeah a little bit a little bit a little yeah. out of focus yeah but no yeah it says kingdom animal there we go yeah let's go <laughs> yeah dude yeah stupid stuff my, my brain's always like it's branching out i have a webbed way of thinking it's always making these disparate connections and that brings me to the last form of expression i think that um that means the most to me I guess not. My, I don't know why I said last. Mm -hmm. The form of expression that means the most to me, and right now it's novel writing because I'm taking all this information that I've gained over the years, all the articles I read continuously every day on a daily basis, all the mediums I or the media I take in, yeah. and it's yeah. coming. It's coming up with these stories. You know, I'll listen to music and I'll form an entire book out of just this one song or this one album. Yeah. I have to put it into words. And so because of that, I'm like, I've told you before, I've got like 28 books in my head of this whole continuity of things that I want to tell the story of. I want you to experience the feelings of these characters. I want you to know um, what they're going through and how you can relate to them. And they're largely drawing from my own experiences or experiences of people I meet uh, in relation to that. But most of all, just telling a very compelling story in a way that people haven't experienced, but have it be real. And just beyond that, just the, the joy of being able to read what I've written, experience it and enjoy it. And then maybe someday have something for my kids to read and enjoy too, is being able to take yourself out of where you're at and experience something else. Um, disconnecting yourself from reality and then coming back with that experience and being able to reapply it uh, to your current life. It's like that, this moved me emotionally, separate from everything else in my life. How can I take what I've experienced and live that out? You know? that's so that's why the foundation of m most fiction is good and evil. Yeah.
um, you take then why they're always almost, almost always rooted in good values and everything. I need you all to understand that this man's memory is crazy, bro. Jude, I don't know if I ever told you that, but I think your memory is like insanely impressive. And so like, really? you, said it, you said it like you're like, and like, I'm talking like even normal things. Like one time when we were driving and I pulled up, uh, um, I pulled up a, yeah, Radiohead album. And I was like, name, like it was, the music wasn't playing. The music was not playing. I just said, name the tracks one after another. And so it's even little things like that, that show me and like how you explain it and like how you explained how the band Radiohead works. It's crazy because you have so many different ideas and different concepts and they each have their own compartment, but you'll, you'll go on, you'll work on it. Then you'll be driving, whatever. Think about, Oh, I can add this to this one. So for me, for me, it's super fascinating to think, like, you know, that SpongeBob meme where like the, the filing cabinet kind of thing and he is. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like your mind is like that without the fire is how I imagine it. Without yeah. the fire. Thanks. No, it's on fire. Most of the time. Yeah. I can... <laughs> fair <enough. laughs> yeah. Fair enough. But it's all because yeah, dude, I think that is such a impressive medium to work with. So I've always appreciated that. I think it's so cool. Um, uh, I'm glad you, you appreciate the medium for sure. Um, and it's like one of those mediums, media, that pe- one of those pieces of media that like, it's so easy to get totally wrong. Mm. And, you know, as I've told you about my experience with, um, you know, thinking about pursuing my master's degree, it's like, mm-hmm. you, know, you get to a point where you realize like either you have it or you don't. Mm. I, I'm, I'm actually genuinely like flattered that you consider my memory to be great. Hundred every day I, I feel like I forget something at work. You know, I, I'm you know, in construction project management. You are running a mile a minute. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just trying to figure out all the stuff you got to order. Um, going through all the plans, all the specs and it can get overwhelming. And I, I, I was thinking today, like my boss, I, we were, we were just giving a tour to some people who were interested in renting the buildings we're working on. And we're walking through, we go to this one room and there's uh, two windows, you know, no, no glass in, in the interior of the office. And my boss turns to me and he's like, he just points at him, you know, and kind of holds his hands up. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and immediately from the top of my head, I'm like, oh, Maverick Glass said that um, they're working on it. The glass is in stock. It's going to arrive tomorrow for these particular windows. And then the transom windows might be Thursday or Friday. They're not sure yet but it's like instant. Yeah. And he yeah. expects that. He expects me to know that. I will pull things from the back of my head that I don't even know why it's stored there. I mean, just like a phrase from SpongeBob. Chocolate! 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 Will jar an entire experience I had with my infinite siblings. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and just like random catchphrases we'd say from TV shows we watch, like just such a vivid thing but it's always the most useless stuff. Like I've only now been able to like really gear it towards remembering the useful things or the important things, at least in the capacity of my work. But in general, I, I still won't say that I have an amazing memory or even a good memory because I feel like I forget too much. Mm. To say it's I was really curious about like for me, like when I skate before I go skating, I like to watch, people skate and I draw inspiration from it sometimes like I'm like oh I, I've never even thought of that trick so I'll go out today and attempt it but most of the time it's just to get me pumped up so with art do you have do you have that same thing like do you look at artists do you draw inspiration from other places or what what is your way that you get motivated or hyped to attempt different things or just just do it in general a very good question so i i am a person who's largely driven by emotional experiences okay yeah and the biggest medium which i'm still trying to get a grasp of creatively is music that sways me i would say movies except that um the difference between music and movies is that movies have your visuals pre-chosen pre-selected music is completely open-ended and I'm a person who is very much in line with open-ended 
things. Yeah. And so like you've mentioned, uh, or like you had mentioned earlier in this conversation, you know, I'll just be driving and I'll get that inspiration. Every time that inspiration comes because I've listened to a new song from, an, from a favorite artist or just any song that I've just discovered will spur something in my head or spark something that has con that suddenly connects all these emotional experiences I've uh, had or want to have. And just uh, from there, the root of the story comes out, you know, but my, but, but even then, I mean, I've been moved by comics um, uh, or especially like manga. I read a lot of manga. I, I say manga instead of manga, because yeah. if you pronounce it manga, then you have to pronounce anime, anime. Right. <laughs> yeah. You have to be consistent. Oh, yeah. people make me so mad. I just say mango like a typical American. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> take that for what it is. Uh, just inspiration in random places, but I've been moved by a lot of comics, Japanese comics that like, you know, I'm reading through. I'm like, how does somebody con conceive of such a scenario that has made me almost want to cry just laying mm. here on my, on my bed mm. sleep. Um, and so I get in from uh, I get inspiration from that. But one of the one of my hard written rules is that whatever medium I'm working on, I cannot be experiencing something from that same medium. I've been told from the few people who've read what I've written so far in this very first book in this entire continuity that my writing is very animated. Okay. And I asked them, "Well, what do you mean by that?" And they said, "I feel like I'm reading a movie hmm. because of the descriptions." But because it's so focused that, um, and like no word is wasted, I feel like it just progresses at like a breakneck pace, but there's so much information crammed in it um, that it feels animated. And that's, a, to me, that's the greatest compliment. Yeah. But yeah. that is largely derived from having such a big influence in movies, especially animated movies, yeah. uh, which, yeah. is, which is kind of segueing into another source of, things that move me artistically, which is animated movies, especially anime classics, you know, Studio uh, Ghibli. Mm. Ghibli. Ghibli. <laughs> there you go again, yep. Yeah, depends on if you're French, Japanese, Italian, yeah. Italian, whatever. I wonder how Isabel would pronounce it. She'd be like, oh, Ghibli. Yeah, or if she would even get the Ghibli part, I feel like she oh, just kind of like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, halfway through the word. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Isabel, she's probably laughing at this. So she's watching. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll send anyway, this <laughs> Yeah, please. Do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of it. Her and Jake. Um, anyway, no, I I am moved by a lot of things. Um, my personal experiences, which can come from movies um, or from even video games. Oh my goodness, I don't know how I forgot. That is huge, actually. Yeah. So you you know very well that I am a diehard Legend of Zelda fan. Yeah. Like mentally, yep. as a kid, I used to like live in that universe. I wanted to live in Hyrule. I wanted to be Link. Yeah. <laughs> part of me that wants that still. And I find like so many of my characters. I remember actually the root of one of the stories I'm writing right now. Um, that character came because, you know, if you played Legend of Zelda games, Link is mute by design. He's meant to be a character you imprint yourself on to an extent because you can yes. kind of infer his personality based on his interactions with other characters. But he is because he's uh, mute by design, that's not really a part of his character. It's just a fill-in for your imagination. I remember one day I was thinking like, what would it be like if the main character of a book or a TV series was 100% mute? Wow. And so yeah. the only way you could properly understand this person, because I'm not writing their thoughts, I'm not writing, I'm not drawing a thought bubble with whatever they're thinking in that moment. You have to know their body language and mm -hmm. see how they react in certain situations. And I'm somebody who like, I observe everyone's yeah. actions more yeah. so yeah. than their words, because yeah. I feel like I should speak louder than words, the old, the age old adage. Mm -hmm. How hard would it be for me as a writer to write somebody who's 100% mute as the main character? But then how hard would it be for a reader to have to peruse through? You're writing body language for a character. Yeah. And that's all you're writing for them. And that's it's a crazy. Challenge. It's an amazing challenge. And I built an entire planet off of that concept of people <laughs> who 
have um, certain sensory disabilities, but have, you know, a way to make up for it in another ability, which is also rooted in reality. It's one less thing to focus on. I was imagining just a whole slew of characters, an entire, um, a whole sub uh, set of humanoids on this planet who were, um, who have certain disabilities, but again, like I said, have like in some kind of way to make up for it yeah. and other enhancements and because of their disabilities are, um, much lower in the cast system, cast system. Yeah. Went from like one book to two books to three books to four books to properly convey the storyline. And then with this bloodline of this family, it stretched out to like, where am I at now? Eight or nine books to fully tell this entire genealogy of people in this one family. And I've actually like drawn the main portraits of each descendant in this family too. It is so ridiculous and it's so fun. And like every once in a while, I'll be listening to an album that inspired one of these members of the family. And, and I'll just be living that character's life in my head. Crazy dude. So yeah. give it, like I have such a weird, vivid imagination. I'm able to like conceive of it in that moment. And then sometimes when I'm living that, another uh, branch will come out of this tree um, of this book I'm writing and it'll fascinate me. I have to get it down. I've got to pull over on the side of the road and write like half a chapter of content wow. for the 14th book in this universe. <laughs> I have it all filed away. I'm like in perfect order, in chronological order. I know like generally at least everything that happens, little details are written, but I'm like front to back. And sometimes I just got to go to the 24th book and listen to the opening of this one album and just experience like the tragedy of a planetary explosion. Yeah. Just to feel again. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Cause I know I'm on the inside, <laughs> but no, for real. Uh, what inspires me is human experience. Yeah. And, the just the raw human experience and you get that from various different uh pieces of media from especially for me f- from musicians mm-hmm. and from animated works yeah so if i'm writing my book i gotta be listening to music or or looking at pictures whatever if i'm drawing i have to draw from memory or you know from real life whatever if it's something yeah. cartoony but i can never be lining up because I'm always afraid, oh, lining up, you know, like writing. I don't want to be writing as an example because I do not want to be copying somebody else. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm afraid of having somebody else's writing style influence me. So I will watch movies. I'll do, I'll read comics. I'll do anything but read a book while That's I'm cool. writing. Yep. Because of that, I've, I'm on a dry spell of like three years not finishing a book and yeah. it's bothering me, but it's also encouraging because that's like prompting me to just keep writing. Because yep. I'm reading my own book. Yep. Yep. Like when you intentionally isolate yourself from that influence, um, basically you don't, from a creative standpoint anyway, you don't know what's wrong. Yeah. And so everything can be right. Yeah. Um, that doesn't work morally. Yeah. <laughs> but it does work when it comes to creativity, especially when you have thought through what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, because uh, you look at like kids YouTubes when they're posting Minecraft stuff and they're like, this mm-hmm. is cool because they haven't seen any videos. I mean, you got to have some influence. Yeah. Yeah. You got to know the, you know, some standards because if you don't know where those markers are, then you're just as That's true. Capable, capable of following human instinct. Yeah. yeah. Falling into pit traps. Yeah. Pitfalls. And it's awesome to know that we all have, it's like, man, I feel bad for anyone who doesn't, think they are creative you know what I mean because it's it's a spectrum you know and you you find whatever medium you want to express yourself through it and when you do it out of passion instead of um, wanting to gain money out of it or wanting to even just gain recognition when you do it because it's something that you just enjoy and you love and even better if you can glorify the Lord through it then it's just like it's something just so rewarding to be able to look back and like for you especially you said it like you can see your journey you can go back and be like oh i was going through this at this time you can listen to an album and be like this is this experience or i built this character i built this universe based off of this so i think that's special i think that's unique you know no like any other writers per se so i've never really had this conversation so I oh it's valuable 
Yeah. I mean, I don't even know if I'd consider myself a writer yet. I almost 100%. Bought- what? <laughs> 100%. Dude, which actually, this is, this would be my last question is you've had, where could people, okay, I guess it's two questions. Where could people find some of your works? Because I know that you had a following with a Legend of Zelda work and you can explain that. And second, second, what are your plans? Like, as you start finishing things, like, how are you going to attempt to get your work out? Are you going to, yeah, so go into, go into both of those. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to go ahead and sidestep that first question because that's been largely abandoned. Um, that was a fun piece written under a pseudonym dude, that dude. I hope no one else will make a connection to. Yeah, it's such a that's fun one. I did, and they're probably wondering if I died, and I hope they think I did because I have no, I don't have the emotional energy to go through that again. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> all I'll say is that all I wanted to do was rewrite. Um. I just wanted to practice writing by novelizing an entire game and it turned into a behemoth (laughs) and it did get a really good following and I regret it (laughs) because now I have like 15 chapters left to write and I have no motivation to do it because I'm writing original books. Right. Right. Thank goodness I wrote it under a pseudonym because (laughs) uh, I don't want to be... I don't want to be the next like Fifty Shades of Gray author. I got you. I got you. Trash. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I have a sister who published a book um, about about what it means to not be in such a rush, and sometimes it's good to stop and and listen to the Lord for His leading. Hmm. Uh, for me, you know, just connecting to that perspective, uh, I'm. I genuinely am not motivated by a following or by making money off it. It would be fantastic if I could make a living off of writing books. Yeah. No question about that. But I've always said, and this applies just to living life. You know, if there was just one person, one person in my entire life who understood me and enjoyed me, that would be enough. And, you know, we know that, that's Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as we're living, we need a companion. We need somebody. Yeah. Um, but I am motivated in the mortal coil, in the mortal life. Um, I, I um, refrain from calling it the secular life because yeah, I got you. We think, ourselves as, we think of ourselves as separate from that and rather connecting the spiritual life to it, um, yeah. applying those principles. But I am motivated um, by the desire just for somebody to experience the emotion of what I'm creating. Mm-hmm. If there is just one person who could read what I've written and say, I love this character. I love this experience. Mm-hmm. I enjoy this and I want to read more mm-hmm. Then I would be content. Mm-hmm. And that's the same. I mean, I've, I've been told before that you only really meet like three or four real friends in your life, Hmm. three or four people who are going to look at you for who you are and know what you're about. You don't even have to explain it to them. It's just understood. No matter how much time has passed, they're your friend and they're your brother and they love you. You very rarely meet people like that, but I just want some, just one person yeah. to read all this crap I've written. If in, just one fan of 28 books, yeah, I'd be happy. That's passion. You know, it may, it may sell. Probably won't. That's okay. I'd rather, I'd rather not have the recognition. I think that the, the pressure of popularity mm. would probably kill me. Mm. I would probably turn into J.D. Salinger and just become a recluse in the mountains. J.D. Mm-hmm. Salinger wrote um, Catcher in the Rye. Right. Like the generic, like, bad boy. I'm a fan of this book. It's right. Catcher in the Rye. I'm an edgy uh, teen, rebellious, uh, sociopath. 
because the book that serial killers uh site too so it's probably no not anyway jd salinger wrote that book didn't think it was going to be that big of an influence ended up being super popular ended up being censored and banned mm. and from the popularity he just locked himself up away from media didn't want anything to do with anybody didn't want the popularity barely let them make a movie out of it to right. just, that's gonna be me if yeah. i ever get famous i'm done mm. lock me in my room lock me away there's a there's a song by midlake back when they were good before they lost their lead singer and uh there's this lyric they say um sometimes or saying they sing uh I always, man, I can't believe I forgot the name of the song, but it's Josh, Josh, if what, if you watch this, you'll know exactly which song, but he says, uh, let me not be too concerned with this world. Sometimes I want to go home and stay out of sight for a long time. Mm. And I find myself saying that just about three or four times a week. And yeah. I can just imagine if I was getting more attention than I'm getting now, which is you know, zero, yeah. uh, I would probably disappear forever <laughs> so <laughs> that's a roundabout um lengthy way of saying i am borderline antisocial huh. but the my success in writing would look like one person all right so thank you guys for watching goodbye message <laughs> um, if you have taken the time to watch me ramble on like a drunken 70 year old man talking about the war um, if you made it this far, first of all, uh, congratulations, my commendations to you for doing that. Yeah, I hope yeah. you've gathered some small bit of valuable information from anything I've said today. Um, I highly doubt it, but it's been fun um, being watched by you. I have thoroughly enjoyed sitting with Andre and having this fireside chat <laughs> through uh, webcam that I borrowed from my boss. I got my nice little studio mic set up. I hope my voice hasn't cut off. That's right. um, anyway, thank you so much for listening. Um, Andre is an absolute G, highly underrated individual. Andre, you're like a, a your top five favorite person in my life. Thank you, wow, man. Wow. You're amazing. Your heart for people, your love for people, your genuine um, nature, your generosity, everything is something that we can all live up to or attempt to live up to. Um, it's something that influences me and motivates me pretty much daily. Um, amazing person. Appreciate your friendship. Uh, I know you got you. I know you've got my back as much as I got. Yeah. I've got yours oh, any day, any weather. Um, it's been a pleasure being on and chatting with you.